How's it going everybody? It's Hugh Sweeney here and tonight I have a review of the Lupo full color LED panel, the kick-ass panel. And that is the light that is right behind me here, giving me this little sort of teal color backlight on the side of my face, which hopefully is complemented by the light I have to my left here, which is actually an old school tungsten light from Ari, one I've had for years. So it's well over two months ago now since Lupo sent me the panel. They not only sent me the light panel, but they also gave me a nice rucksack, which I use quite a bit because it's quite a large bag and I used it as a sound bag for my large microphone, this um, Sennheiser 416 here. And I had my other sound gear in there as well and a few other bits because I was doing a job where, where I was traveling quite a bit and I needed everything in two bags. And lo and behold, Lupo had just sent me that bag with the panel. So thanks to Lupo for sending me that. They also sent me this uh, light stand here, which I'm actually using as a mic stand, plus the actual light itself. So what are my first impressions of the Lupo Kick-Ass LED panel? Well, firstly, when I took it out of the box, I noticed that it was built quite nicely. I liked the feel of it. Not overly cool in the design department, but it's well put together. Even though it's plastic, it feels really rugged. And you can just tell that it's a, a professional light. And when I switched it on, the first thing I noticed about the panel was the sort of Fresnel diffuser plate on the front and how it focused the light into a narrow enough beam. I do believe it's got a 40 degree beam, which is very narrow for an LED panel like that. And that for me was exactly what I wanted because in most cases you want to control the light. And with these smaller LEDs, these small to mid sized LED panels, very often you're using them as hair lights, as back lights, as you know, focus lights where you're focusing the light on a subject or something like that. So the fact that it was a more directed beam was awesome, exactly what I wanted. And it gave out a really nice organic feeling light as well. Very unlike the LEDs of early years when whites had a very purplish pinkish tone to them. So it's a very simple light to use. It hasn't got an overly complex menu system. Straight away I went for the CCT mode and I dialed up a couple of different color temperatures there. And with that mode, it let you go from 2800 Kelvin right up to 10,000, which is a huge range of light. Now it probably does so through its full color technology. This is a full color RGB light. Plus it's got white in there as well. So you have a lot of capabilities there in color temperature. I set up the light over here and I decided to try and match this very warm kind of tungsten, even beyond tungsten, old school element light over here. And the CCT mode brought me close. In fact, it was perfectly adequate to match in the light, but I decided to try and match in the light more exactly. So I went to the RGBW mode in the kick-ass panel. Now RGBW mode lets you individually dial in exact values for RGB, red, green, and blue. And if that isn't enough, it'll let you add white to the mix as well, brightening the overall picture. But when you add white to it, it will actually take the color away a little bit and add white, it'll make it brighter. So I went for the RGB mode and I dialed in the exact color. I was able to match the exact color of the temperature of the light behind me, which was fantastic because that is one of the big things about lighting for films. You want to create really nice practicals and complement those practicals and fill those practicals with your own off-camera lights. And that's exactly what I did. In fact, what I did was I let the, the light go in camera and I cloned it out. And it just, it, it was something really cool, something I haven't done yet. I tried it with the inbuilt diffuser and the actual, the, the umbrella as well. And I got a great effect out of it. It was awesome, really cool. There's no fan on this light, so it's dead quiet. Now, you wouldn't expect it to be loud even if it did have, have a fan, but if you were using it on camera, and it had a fan, it might cause little problems. So this light is completely passive and it has a lot of vents in there. It's obviously, you know, it's gonna heat up a little bit, but I haven't noticed any hot temperatures from this light. So the fact that it doesn't have a fan is great. So the kick-ass LED panel from Lupo is sized in the region of that on-camera type of LED light that you would use if you were stuck for just lighting things really quick in a run and gun situation. But that is the last thing that us guys want. We just, that sort of, unless you're filming uh, something deliberately where you want that on-camera light look, you're better off just putting this on a stand. And it is the perfect light, as I said, for hair lights, back lights, 
directional lights. So don't be fooled by thinking that this is an on-camera light, it's anything but really. So what modes have I used in the Lupo kick-ass panel since I got it? Well, first up, the CCT mode really is the go-to mode for most lighting situations because it's got that very wide temperature range. But you can also get a little bit more creative with the HSI mode. Now, with the HSI mode, you will be able to go through the different color spectrum from, you know, the warm reds right down to the cold blue colors. And the three knobs will let you dial in the actual strength of the light, the hue of the light, which is the color basically, and then the saturation. So in the HSI mode, you can come up with a lot of very accurate colors very quickly between selecting your hue, how much saturation you want, and then how much strength you want in the light as well. So HSI mode is a really good, quick, creative mode. Now what's great is you can save that down after you tweak it so it'll let you save up to five presets as well. Now speaking of presets, this kick-ass panel has 48 inbuilt presets. Now 48 is quite a lot of light. So you can go through all these different pre-programmed lights from Lupo, which will give you an array of very nice little individual lights that you can use. Now it's a pity that they only let you save five of your own colors because it would be nice if you could save a few more. Now that's something that Lupo could probably easily fix in an update, in a firmware update, something I'd like to see. We gotta talk about the effects mode. Oh God. <laughs> I tried the TV mode. It'll let you do full color TV and black and white TV and it's just not that usable. It doesn't look like a TV. TVs have quite an organic light flicker. They go from different colors very fast, the subtle changes there, and there's a mixture of different tones from a TV, and usually even a full color TV will give out a sort of a purplish bluish tinge, and the full color TV setting in this light is just absolutely useless. It almost looks like their disco setting. I would say Lupo should go back to the, the drawing board and re revamp the firmware there with a better TV light. And as for the other settings as well, the effects modes like paparazzi and lightning and stuff, I do think that they're a little bit sort of basic and they could do with a bit more programming in there. Now, speaking of which, normally you could do something like that with an app. Unfortunately, this light doesn't uh, have an app and you cannot control the light with an app. And normally I like to get away from using the phone with devices like this. I like to be able to do everything with just the device. But in this case, I really wish that Lupo had an app for this light and that you could maybe set up your own creations, your own light programs, maybe going from certain colors and maybe even matching BPMs and creating a little light show that you could mix in with, uh, you know, your DJ setup or if you were filming something like that, where you could change tempos and, and change different colors at different times. It would be interesting to do that through an app. When you're ordering this light, I do believe there's two different battery types. I think they have the Canon type batteries. The LP6s are the NP Sony type batteries, which are a slightly bigger, more rugged battery, which are a little bit more accessible. You can buy them a bit cheaper and in bigger sizes. So I went for the NP style battery and I found the battery on this to be quite good. Now, usually I haven't used this light on full power. If you were using it on full power, I think it'll probably eat a bit more battery, but those batteries, you know, you can bring a few with you. Now, if batteries aren't good enough and you're doing it long term, you can plug in the light as well with an adapter. Now, you can plug it in with USB as well, but it won't give you full power. So who is this light for? I would say first and foremost, this is a really good creative filmmaking light. I shot some stuff around my place here with this light over the last few nights and I tried it in a few different scenarios obviously at the table here but I also pushed the light a little bit further I bounced it against the ceiling to see what sort of effect I can get and because it's quite directional you can get a really pleasing reflective bounce light off this where it's not lighting you know the walls but it's just lighting the ceiling and that will give you a really interesting sort of wash of light so don't be fooled into thinking that this is only, you know, a small close-up directional light. This is a very good bounce light, especially with new cameras now that are very sensitive to light and you only need the slightest little bit of light to create your scene. So I think the kick-ass panel is a really good indie filmmaker's light. I think that is first and foremost, its primary purpose. It's the ultimate backlight for interviews, brilliant for that stuff. Can you use it as a key light 
for your interviews. Well, guess what? I tried that and even with my Canon R5 here, which needs a lot of light, I was able to use it as a main light. Now you might need to be fairly close to your light source, but usually you are for interviews. So if you were stuck, you could use it as a key light. Just bring an umbrella with you. So what are some of the negatives with the Lupo kick-ass LED panel? One of the main negatives I found from using this repeatedly over the last couple of weeks is the actual menu systems and the buttons on the back of the light. Firstly, there's a slight little bit of a delay when pressing the button to, to wait for the next menu or the next setting. You can't rush through it by clicking it repeatedly. It will take a little bit of time. The buttons aren't overly satisfying to press. They're a little bit sunk into the back of the panel there as well. And in certain cases, when you're dialing up uh, color temperatures, especially in the RGB mode, you're actually using the buttons to go up and down the values of individual temperatures. And I found that instead of having the buttons do that, it would have been nicer if they, if they let you dialed in the actual temperature as opposed to putting it in with the buttons. I just found it would be a little bit quicker. So the light is a little bit fiddly in terms of usability at times. Nothing that's too awkward and it's very quick to use, but I think that if they were to do a firmware update and sort of rehash some of the controls, it might be a good thing. Now, one great thing about this light is that it's a very affordable light at 300 euros. And when you're buying this light, you're buying a proper pro light. This Lupo light, this kick-ass panel, has the same light engine, the same LED engine as their bigger panels, as their super big uh, expensive panels, which cost two and a half grand or so. So you're not buying a little pocket LED, you're buying sort of a small section of a very big pro light. And I like that about this LED. If you were to go and get their bigger systems, you would actually match this in beautifully and it would be a great complementary light to, we'll say, if you had one of their bigger LED panels uh, up front as a key light. Now, speaking of Lupo, Lupo seem to be a really high quality manufacturer. They're, they're making really nice stuff. I had a look at some of their Fresnel lights and they're really nice looking. Check their website and check out some of their different lights. I would definitely go for Lupo lights again. In fact, I'd love to get a second one of these lights because with these lights, the more the merrier, especially when you're creating different ambiences and different light setups. So that is all from the Lupo kick-ass LED panel. I'm loving it, I'm using it a lot and it's gonna stay in my bag for a long time. If you can, give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, it means a lot. And if you haven't already subscribed, if this is of interest to you, this type of stuff, please do. So until the next video, guys, it's over and out from me. Take care.